Welcome to this week's edition of What's the 401 Sports. I'm Keisha Wilson. And I'm Mike McDonald. The NBA Finals, they are here. They are in full effect. And there has been no shortage of chatter about what we have seen so far. Mike, talk to me about your thoughts on the NBA Finals. Well, Keisha, I'll go back in time. So we'll start with game two. I thought it was all just about the Steph Curry show. He was fantastic. We've been waiting for a performance like that from him. He was just sensational. This was an opportunity for the Cavaliers to bounce back, and Steph, made, Steph Curry made sure that that was not going to happen. Nice job by the Warriors now to get this 2-0 lead. Then, of course, we go to this crazy game one where let's start with LeBron James. I mean, this was one of the most sensational performances that we ever saw in an NBA Finals matchup. He carried his team throughout the whole game. He was hitting shots from the outside, playing great defense, penetrating, carrying his team, and all of that seems like it was for nothing the way that everything played out. Obviously, with J.R. Smith, with this complete horrible bonehead play that he made at the end of the game, and one thing with J.R. Smith was that in a lot of ways he was kind of bailed out by this horrible, horrible officiating which has been continuing to happen in the NBA, um, in these NBA Finals. The thing that gets me is it's not just the plays where the referees are missing calls where they're getting exposed at the end of the game. It's a lot of the stuff that's happening throughout the game. Specifically, I'm talking about the three points. Three point shots that players are taking where if a defensive player just breathes on the guy, the officials are calling, are, are, are calling the foul. And it's just start, something that's starting to drive me nuts. I'll finish with this. Um, I think that the, Cav the Cavaliers have an opportunity now going home to bounce back in this series, make something out of it. But when you lose like that in game one, it just especially when you're the underdog and you're on the road and you have an opportunity to steal home court advantage, it just takes it sucks the life out of you. So I'm interested to see how LeBron and the Cavaliers could sort of bounce back now that they're in this 2-0 hole. Remember, we've seen them come down from 3-1 just two years ago and win the NBA championship. But this is a different Cavalier team, maybe not as good as that team was. And certainly with Kevin Durant now, this Warriors team is much better than they were two years ago. Yeah, so I think this finals is an extension of this the regular season for the Cavaliers where LeBron is carrying this team and is putting forth these Herculean efforts and the supporting cast really not being able to seal the deal for them. You know, we mentioned that LeBron and James had a historic performance in game one, all for naught. And, you know, I, I don't want to pile on J.R. Smith too much because I, I, I did feel a little badly for him because... I actually forgot that the game was tied and I was distracted and I guess I'm not paid like he is to be aware of these type of situations but you know brain farts happen and we've seen it um, in over the course of basketball in the NBA in college Chris Webber calling a timeout when he didn't have one Magic Johnson dribbling the ball um, out of regulation when he wasn't, um, I think that, that cost him the game. So these things sometimes happen, but I think because J.R. Smith kind of has a history of these kind of boneheaded, if you want to call it, decisions and uh, that he makes during the games, I think that's added, you know, to why he was really the talk of the conversation. But my stance was, yes, he made a mistake, and it was a costly one, but there were five minutes after that that the Cavs had a chance to win. And what I saw was a lack of defense. And then I saw actually LeBron James, I thought, doing too much, feeling as though that he had to do everything and taking on three, four Warriors every time he was going to the basket. And the law of averages will tell you that you're not going to win that. So I thought, you know, the Cavaliers missed an opportunity and it seems that this team does not handle adversity well at the end of the regulation game one you just see the dejection on their faces and I think also in game two the the cows were in it they had a chance to to make a push to for the win but I think when Golden State just got on that run they the Cavs just fell apart uh, they go back to Cleveland I don't know I don't know if they can win two games in Cleveland. I, I just don't know. Uh, Ty Tyron Liu, coach of the C Cleveland Cavaliers, has some decisions to make. Whether or not he's going to start JR or bring him off the bench, I think Kyle Korver should get some more minutes. Look, throw Rodney Hood in the game. See what he can give you. And somebody uh, I was watching one of the sports shows said uh, this morning said that that's not a really 
great attitude to have. You know, you shouldn't just throw somebody in and see what they could do, that this is not the time. But I don't know when is. I mean, you, you're fighting for your basketball lives here. You want to win this championship. And if you can get a few good minutes out of Rodney Hood, why not? Yeah. Why not try it? So um, I'm hoping that... Um, the Cavs can can make it an interesting series and avoid a sweep, but it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough, and then of course after you know even in the midst of the finals that we're still talking about what LeBron's next moves are and looking at his face yeah. <laughs> on the bench and on the court sometimes I just don't see how he could stay in Cleveland, but it might be by default. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs>